Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Total Annihilation, Total Annihilation uh, review here. I'm going to do another live review. What we have here today is we have um, Blood Eyes versus uh, Jono. Now, uh, Blood Eyes, if my memory serves me right, he's a Brazilian player. Um, and uh, he, was, uh, he was pretty good, um, pretty good player back when I played. Um, I don't think he and I played too many games. Um, and then Jono, of course, who um, whose name I'm sure I'm mispronouncing. It's either Jono or Jono. Who knows? Um, You'll just have to write me, you know, and 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 correct me. Um, so anyway, looking at uh, at both these players here, uh, they're both going arm. That's pretty standard for high level TA play. Um, there are very few people uh, in my day who primarily went core. I think I was the only one. Um, so we'll try and find a few core versus arm games to make things interesting too for those who are interested in how that plays out. Uh, if you're curious uh, as to why uh, arm is played and ar and core is not. You can uh, check out my guide on uh, Total Annihilation Universe called Postal's Guide to Core, where I discuss a lot of the differences and the advantages that ARM actually has over Core, um, and talks about situations in which um, Core ends up being better than ARM. And there are very few situations, but they're, they're very specialized. Um, map choice is one of the big things that determines whether or not uh, it's a big advantage to Core or a big advantage to ARM. Taking a look right here, you can see that there is no way for flashes to get from one side of this pond to the other. Um, and so that lends a little bit of an advantage, uh, takes away some of ARM's advantage. Now, one of the biggest advantages, the most subtle advantages between ARM and core, are the fact that the ARM construction vehicles move and deploy their nanolayer faster. Um, they just simply are able to accelerate and move around and do things faster than core construction vehicles can. It allows ARM to scale faster than core does. And that's one of the more subtle um, advantages that uh, that ARM has. And so as a core player, you've got to be really specific with your routes and making sure that everything that you have is working. Um, so anyway, this map has good title, um, good wind, and so it's an air-first opportunity um, and uh, decent resources all over the place. Uh, and so it makes it really, really interesting. Going sea-first is a possibility too because you can rush those skeeters in right in here and start shooting uh, these metal extractors. Uh, so there's all kinds of different ways to play this. Um, I felt like I got pretty good at this map, um, in part because it was um, just, I think, a fun one to play, although oftentimes it turns into a, a hawk racetrack, um, but that's just uh, that's just the way, go way it goes. So here we go. We'll go ahead and get this started. So just so you know, we've got uh, two blues here, which makes things really difficult. Uh, so we have dark, bl uh, Geno in dark blue and Blood Eyes in uh, light blue, I would actually change that right now. Um, hold on a sec. I don't remember a lot of my commands particularly well, but I think, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got uh, Blood Eyes in red and Jono in blue. Here we go. Now, they always build one energy right away because they want to start using metal immediately. Um... So that way there's no metal excess that happens. Uh, so, because your commander produces plus one metal, you don't want that to go to waste. There we go. All right, and it looks like uh, Blood Eyes has gone ahead with the air first here. He asks, are you air? To which Jono responds, yeah, you. And Blood Eyes lies and says, no. And they both start building that bomber. Blood Eyes states he's a peaceful man. This is the kind of trash talk and back and forth I always loved in the beginning of the game. Just trying to get underneath somebody's skin, trying to get them to, uh, to figure out what you're doing. Now notice neither of them reclaimed any trees. Um, that would be a bit of a giveaway. But it looks like Blood Eyes gets his bomber off first. We'll go ahead and slow it down here. He asks if he's Freedom Fighter first. But they both went bomber. And now they're both going Freedom Fighter. Bombers passed in the sky. Blood Eyes marks everything's up. Good bombing run. Takes out the metal. Bomber came out at around yeah, 150. Rookie's commenting on it again. Uh, that's annoying that a watcher is doing that, but... This is a not a good place for Jonah to be. He gets his Freedom Fighter bombed. But Jonah's paying attention over here. And both of them managed to get the Freedom Fighter off. 
So that fighter is going to be able to chase that bomber around. Although, you can see how Blood Eyes, what he's doing is he's slinging his bombs, destroying what he's building on the pad, and then flying off screen. Because Jonah's busy trying to keep his bomber alive. Blood Eyes has got two fighters out, claiming air superiority. Spicy little air first battle here. Blood Eyes comes, trying to take air superiority away. Drops a Jono's fighter. Jono's down two fighters. And you might be wondering, why doesn't he build a laser tower or try and stop and shoot down the fighter that way? It doesn't work very well. So now uh, Blood Eyes is camping the pad, stopping him from building his freedom fighters. Now it looks like at this point Jono's just given up, and he's going to go ahead and reclaim his air pad. Now, Blood Eyes, what he's doing here is he's trying to shoot these winds, but um, they don't particularly turn very well. Um, and so his raid continues. He withdraws. So he sees Jono building his vehicle plant. Uh, he knows a Samson's going to come out, and uh, he needs to uh, actually spend time. Because you'd see, like, well, why doesn't he just send those fighters over there um, to keep going? That just takes time. Oh, it looks like, oh, my mistake here. It looks like Jonah's bomber did survive. So yeah, he needs to keep his fighters alive to protect him from that bomber. And he doesn't want to drop him to a Samson that comes out. So you can see the first thing Jonah puts out is that Samson from using that metal he uh, got from his air facility. Just not in line of sight. That's why nothing's happening here. Two Samsons, that'll handle the fighters. And down goes a fighter. Now, you might be wondering, what is Blood Eyes doing with this? Uh, what he's going is he's going to take these Ulok plants from Jono's side. Jono's out of metal. That's why his plant is off. This is going to be a really nice, nice grab for Blood Eyes here. When I put up another bomber, he also dropped a missile tower using that fighter. So he had the fighter start it, had the commander finish it. Uh, and sends the, sorry, yeah, and then sends the aircon off to reclaims. That is unlucky for Blood Eyes there, because Jono didn't know that missile tower was there. Um, it was just in the way of that attack run. So he not only loses his max, he drops that missile tower they had there for his defense. Now... Comes the bomber again. He's got those winds marked. He takes out two of them there. Again, though, he's getting away with murder here by uh, by snagging all these. That's an extra 500 metal he got between all those. That was very bad by Blood Eyes. He gave the move order, but didn't get the attack order. Wasn't able to get his bomb run off. Take some damage. He's going to have to retreat. Nice runs by Jono here, taking out all of the energy. That's going to cause him to stall. See how the fighter shoots, but it can't hit off screen. Quickly, hastily putting some missile towers back up. And this puts Jono in a better build position, really, because he's got these cons that are going to start going. So, we got more bombing coming back on this side. The reason why I haven't picked up the speed yet is because you want to keep up with all the bombing that's going on here. Right there, he takes out all of his mexes. It's going to cause him to slow down again. All but one there. Swings back around and takes it out. You don't know if his air defense moved too far away. Blood Eyes gets the bomb for free. And his bomber is still alive. So he's going to come back. He's going to repair it. He's going to send it out again. And that's going to really stall his uh, Blood Eyes expansion. As he stayed there. See how slow he is in building these things. It's just because he is out of resources. Now, uh, if I were him, I'd go ahead and start cleaning up more of those trees. If he gets wind up. That should get him going. He reclaims his own Ulock plants. Um, and so that's going to look nice for him. We can take a look. Right now, they are even.
See so here right now, Jonah is on eight metal income versus Blood Eyes is one. As he was able to quickly get his metal extractors recapped because those construction vehicles are simply better builders. So and Jonah still has essentially the same raid ability that Blood Eyes does. So things are really looking up for Jonah at this point. He's got much better construction ability. Three missile towers. Again, bad luck. Um, spotted him, hit those missile towers. That's really good run by Jonah. In comes the bomber here for another run. Flies it off screen. It gets to live to bomb another day. Oh, nope, brings it back. That nah, was unlucky. So you can see how there's this fighter. Blood Eyes sent it up there to try and chase the bomber down. He really doesn't like the fact that it's up. Although that fighter looks like it's just flying to a trap here. Got a missile off. Jono quickly flies the uh, bomber off screen to try and protect it from the fighter. Loses his missile towers, saves his bomber. Blood Eyes here is thinking he's got enough metal from reclaiming those Ulock plants to go ahead and drop his vehicles to try and catch up with Jono in building, but Jono at this point has already gone C, uh, reclaimed his vehicle plant. Doesn't need to build too many more uh, units. Blood Eyes says, bah. He knows he's probably behind at this point. Jono, 11. Blood Eyes, 5. Jono's up by 1,000 metal at this point, although he did reclaim his plant. So that'll skew the numbers a little bit. And Jonah's bomber lives again. That's just a, that is one healthy looking bomber right there. Blood Eyes says, GG. Five missile towers doesn't take out the bomber. He says, "Screw it, he's done." Um, Blood Eyes, of course, I still think he had a chance, but Jonah really just—he just, he just kinda, I mean, he outplayed him in the beginning there with that bomber. Um, switching vehicle was was good. Blood Eyes knew that he was going to lose simply just to the building power because he's got all of his vehicle uh, constructions out, um, and Blood Eyes didn't have any. Jonah, he sees Jonah's in the sea, and he's going to start overrunning him there. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, uh, that it's safe to say that that game would have ended in Jono's favor. So, good game, guys. Uh, I like that. Nice air versus air start. Um, those are always exciting. You never know how that can go, where uh, a bomb could fling in a weird direction and, and change the fate of things. I've, I've gone air first sometimes, and the other person goes, uh, I've got my shadow out, and then they bring their freedom fighter over. And um, sometimes deliberately, but uh, sometimes just by luck, I would sling a bomb towards the, uh, the freedom fighter. And because sometimes the freedom fighters would fly at a lower altitude, especially if they're over water. And if you came in from a higher altitude, like over a mountain, you could get your bomber to drop a bomb on top of the freedom fighter uh, and take it out. And so I've had a few of those happen. Um, and that's always uh, extra exciting. So anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, take care.